Well, the Canadian province of Quebec is presently trying to pass a law allowing euthanasia. Four-year-old Jessica Saba from Quebec was born with a congenital heart condition. She survived several cardiac arrests and she sent a video to the King of Belgium asking him to refuse to sign the law for child euthanasia. We'll speak to her pediatrician father shortly, but first, here's a clip of that video. They may also give up too early and just accept the euthanasia of the child as being their only solution, when in reality, it is not. For the sake of the children of the world, please do not sign the euthanasia law. Please do not sign the euthanasia law for the sake of the children. Well, Dr. Paul Saba is Jessica's father and co-founder of the Coalition of Physicians for Social Justice. We can speak to him now. He's in Montreal. Uh, welcome. Thank you very much for talking to us. Uh, anyone, of course, can watch the rest of the video online. I've seen it all. It's very moving indeed. Those behind this change say it will, in fact, affect only a very small number of children, most likely, and they will most likely be teenagers, not very young. Well, I think the government always tries to package and sell the product. So they try to make it sound it'll be a very small number. As you know, in Belgium, when they started with the adult euthanasia, there were only several hundred who were euthanized in the first year, and now it's up to 1,500. They started with people which they talked about physical suffering, and now they've extended to those who are depressed, those who are tired of life. So the same slippery slope, the same expansion will happen for children as has, ha has happened for adults. And yet, you know that no one is talking about a child making this decision for themselves. Far from it. Parents, other doctors, psychiatrists will be involved. When you're a pediatrician, do you not trust other doctors to make the right decision? Uh, I'm actually a family physician, but I work with children. And uh, no, uh, we cannot trust and put our power uh, as individuals and the choice of what's going to happen to our future uh, or the future of our children in anybody's hands, whether it's doctors, hospital administrators, government officials, what we're doing is we're basically handing out the right to choose our futures to others. And in fact, what they're selling as a choice is actually going to be giving it away to the government. As you know, in Belgium, 32% of people who are euthanized are actually done without consent. This is, was published in the British and Canadian Medical Journal in 2010. Half the cases go unreported. And the same thing that's happening to adults will happen to children. The great danger and the great sadness in all this is that people who uh, should not die will die. Uh, children are, as you know, easily influenced. They don't even have the capacity before, uh, uh, you know, at tw even at 12 or 13 years old, to make decisions that involve abstract reasoning, judgment, discernment. Even the brain, the frontal lobes of the brain are not completely formed. Uh, we don't allow children to vote at this age. We don't allow them to, uh, to drive cars. They don't have these uh, psychomotor abilities. So we're going to be allowing them to make decisions about life and death. And as you know, children are easily influenceable. They're influenceable by their parents, by authorities. Just we Forgive me, Dr. Sava, one, one thought here. What, what is the alternative, though? Some of the people backing you seem to suggest that palliative care is always the answer. The modern medicine can always remove pain and suffering immediately before death and at the point of death. I mean, you've seen more death than me, I'm sure, but I've been with at least four of my relatives when they were very ill and right at the time of death. They were receiving palliative care. They suffered a great deal. Well, the problem is, is that people who don't get proper and adequate palliative care will suffer. And here in Quebec even, we have up to 80% of people in certain areas who don't even have access to palliative care. Palliative care, you can actually increase the dose of medication. You can increase it to the point of actually causing death, uh, and that's not euthanasia. The difference is that people do go into palliative care and some actually recover. The cancer that was supposed to be incurable, untreatable, life-ending, actually reverses uh, the people changes. You know, the diagnosis and treatments will change. Uh, you know, the prognosis of a person, when we predict some people will die, don't actually die. In fact, we know that for uh, many diseases, chronic severe diseases, the ability to uh, predict who is going to die over the next six months is only 50 percent. So there's going to be lots of people who are going to be euthanized who will not have a second chance to survive. And you're right, in the case of palliative care, the, you know, euthanasia is not a medical treatment, never has been. It's a poor choice, it's a poor substitute 
for good medical care, which includes palliative care. In fact, the pediatric Dr. association... Sell, forgive me, we're going to have to leave it there. Clearly, this debate is Thank going you. to be going on. I'm sure we'll be talking to you again. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you ever so much.